In this tutorial, I'm gonna it's it's gonna be a beginner's tutorial, so anyone who's advanced, this is just gonna be review stuff for you. So I'm gonna just start by making a new document. I'll just make it 2,000 pixels by 2,000 pixels. This is just to show you different things, different tools that I'm gonna be using throughout this tutorial. All right, we're gonna start with this tool toolbar over on the left. I'm going to just give you a brief rundown on every single tool on here. So once again, this is just for beginners. I mean, just scratching the surface of Photoshop. I'm going to start out with the rectangular marquee tool. It can make different shapes. Um, there's, there's, there are going to be selections which you can fill. And uh, you can make circle or a rectangle, just like this. Make it any shape. Holding shift makes a perfect square. So you just make that. You can fill it just like that. That's just easy for making quick selections. And uh, this is the arrow tool, which you use for moving moving elements. Like I'm moving this layer, layer one. I can move it around. Uh, this is the lasso lasso tool, which also has the polygonal lasso tool and the magnetic lasso tool. Magnetic lasso tool, like if you have a photo of a person, it recognizes the difference of the side of the face to um, the background and will select, you know, what it thinks you want to select. It does an okay job, but uh, I like to use the regular lasso tool, and you can turn it into the polygonal tool at any time by clicking and holding option, so you can click in straight lines, or by holding the mouse and letting go of option, you can just draw and make a selection like this. So it's just good for making selections on any anything you're working on. And uh, I'll just make this just so uh, I can show you the next one. The Magic Wand Tool is a pretty awesome tool. It selects anything on the layer of a certain color. So you see it selected the pink. Right here it's selecting you know, the background, the white. You can adjust the tolerance. The uh, lower this number is, the more exact of the color. The higher it goes, the more lenient it is, and it'll select other things. Um, you can see that a lot in photos. Next is the crop tool, uh, which along with it, in the button is a slice tool and the slice select. Slicing is uh, used for, mainly for websites. It's what you can slice different buttons so and name them different things. So when you open up Dreamweaver, it'll put them in their, their correct place. But uh, Anyway, the crop tool gives just kind of has the rule of thirds <clears throat> in photography. The rule of thirds uh, grid on it, and then you just make your selection and press enter when you're ready, and it crops. The eyedropper, pretty self-explanatory. It selects what color um, you want, brings it over here. Yep, and uh, then there's the spot healing brush, which is Gonna, uh, it's a lot like the clone stamp on a face. It can remove blemishes and things like that. Next is the uh, let's see, what else is in here? Red eye tool gets rid of that. Uh, red eye healing brush is a lot like spot healing. I'm not sure what the patch tool does, but uh, I'll get back to you on that. Here's the brush tool, pencil tool, uh, draws in pixels. If I make the brush bigger here draws per pixel, so it's a lot rougher than the brush is. Um, the brush usually has a feather tip, um, but you can select a hard hard brush too. There's just many different uh, things you can do with the brush, including paint. Paint things. And this is something new to CS5, uh, I have a Wacom tablet, and the direction your pen is is the direction that uh, the paintbrush will be in. It's like trying to make it as real as they can. The clone stamp tool will remove, it will copy a specific area by holding option or control. So you just click to sample it. As you can see, it, it's just filling it with the, this is another good thing for removing blemishes and stuff like that. The history brush, um, I believe, 
will uh, erase to the previous to previous uh, parts in your history, which is over here, right here. And this is just a way of going back in time. Um, regular eraser, pretty self-explanatory. It erases. Magic eraser tool erases like the magic wand, where it'll make a selection of color. Uh, gradient tool fills a gradient, which you edit up here. So let's just have it as you draw it across is where it'll put the gradient, whether you want it long and smooth, smooth gradient, or a really defined one. Next is the blur tool. Pretty straightforward. It blurs edges, makes them smoother. Sharpen tool sharpens edges. Smudge tool smudges. You can pick different brushes for that. Dodge tool makes things lighter than they used to be. Just like photography, well, the old days. Burning makes things darker, as you can see. Sponge tool desaturates, or I believe if you hold option, it saturates. Oh, here it is, the mode. So if you want to saturate or desaturate. That's what that one does. Bin tool is for making a selection. Once you make the bend, it'll do it'll auto do that auto bend there. So if you want to edit that point, you hold option and cut the anchor point. So you can do this again. Otherwise it's gonna it's gonna make this the bend at the point right here automatically. So this is just for making selections. If you go to paths, make selection. Uh, just do zero. It makes a selection. Okay. Type tool, straightforward. Mix type, which you can command or control T, size it. There's that. You can also make a make a shape. You can uh, type down the size of it. It'll type in the direction of that shape. This is just a selection tool. These are basic shapes. You can make a rectangle, rounded rectangle, which obviously has rounded edges. Ellipse, once again holding shift will make a perfect circle. Polygon, basically a stop sign. Line tool makes straight lines. Custom shape is whatever whatever shape you want it to use, and you can select them up here. Anyway, let me blank make the blank canvas canvas again here. Okay. CS3 has 3D capabilities, so if you have a 3D text, this is how you would move the camera and stuff. Here's the hand tool, which let me show you. If you zoom in, it's how you move around your document. If it were, if you were zoomed in enough to notice. Uh, and down here is your color palette. You can switch it by either pressing X on your keyboard or clicking these arrows. This brings back to black and white. Um, and that's pretty much it for this section. Here's the magnifying glass holding option or control. We'll zoom out. Zooming in is just clicking with it. Okay. And that's a pretty straightforward tutorial on just this toolbar. I will make another one for this area over here, or several, along with the adjustments. So, uh, thanks for watching and subscribe please.